What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Speak Organized podcast. My guest today is a hoarding expert currently residing in Las Vegas. And let me just say that she probably has the most interesting clients you could imagine. But of course, you're going to have to stick around to hear more on that from her. And we had the most excellent conversation about all things hoarding. She sets the record straight and tells us all about a typical day in her business really fascinating stuff that you're definitely not going to want to miss. She also shares tons of resources for newbies looking to start their very own professional organizing business. She sent me not one, but two emails with resource links that I'm going to be sharing in today's episode. So I invite you guys to stick around and let's get into it. Hello, everyone. Again, welcome to the Speak Organized podcast. So happy to have you here. I'm your host, Melanie Summers, professional organizer, decluttering expert, and productivity-based life coach. I like to speak organized to give you the tools to conquer your clutter, live life with more purpose, and learn all about the business of tidying. Do me a favor, however you're here today, look at the screen of your device and give that subscribe button a tap. It would be such an honor to have you as a member of the Speaker Fam. This podcast streams on most major podcast platforms. We're available on Google, Apple, and Spotify, as well as visually on YouTube if you happen to be watching today. So be sure to give us a thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube. And don't forget to tap that little notification bell so you never miss out on a notification of when I have posted new content every single week. I'm your go-to gal for all things pro-organizing business, as well as living a more organized and productive life. You can find me at I Speak Organized on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Be sure to join my free Facebook group. It's a great place where professional organizers and those seeking a more organized and productive lifestyle can get together and pick each other's brains and just have a really awesome supportive community. I would love to have you in there. So don't forget to join that group and follow along on social media. And lastly, if you're new here or you've been sitting on the fence while everyone around you is saying, just start the dang business already, you know who you are. I wanna make sure that I get you up to speed on all the special offers and resources that I have available for you through I Speak Organized. If you're ready to get serious about starting or leveling up your professional organizing business, you have the opportunity to schedule an affordable consultation with me to get all of your questions answered. For real, nothing is off the table. And I would be honored to strategize with you and provide you with tons of resources during our call. I am serious about my mission to help you successfully start your own business and help you overcome any fear or doubt you have in your ability to make home organizing your new career. It was the best thing I ever did, and I would love to help you do it too. My schedule fills up quickly, so be sure to click the link in the description or the pinned comment to book your call before all of my slots are full for the month. And if you're ready to get paying clients in the door faster, you're gonna need a streamlined process to onboard your prospects. And I have taken all the guesswork out of doing that. What to ask potential clients during consultations, what to put in your agreements, getting customer reviews, and more with my signature Pro Organizer Forms Pack. These are nine done-for-you forms that are customizable in a free Canva account, and I'll even show you how to set up that account if you've never used Canva before. These forms will save you days, possibly weeks worth of work researching and drafting critical documents to run your business professionally, and they're specifically designed for our industry. All of my YouTube and podcast fam get an exclusive discount, YT Pro 8, and that will get you $8 off at checkout. Lastly, if you are totally intimidated by using social media for your business, I have a great class that you can watch on your own time called the I Speak Organized Social Media Method. It includes five 20 to 30 minute lessons that will help you come up with endless post ideas for the most popular platforms, including easy reels and TikTok video ideas, how to boost your following and engagement with people who actually like and share your content, how to post consistently without spending hours on social every day with my signature content planner that you'll receive for free at the end of class and a breakdown of all my favorite tools and software. I've made it super accessible and affordable for you. And of course, you get a bonus discount for being part of my speaker fam, ISO Social 5 at checkout. 
All right, speaker fam, welcome to this fabulous episode. I'm pleased to be joined by my guest, Cassie Lapierre of The Creative Organizer based out of Las Vegas, Nevada. I want to welcome you, Cassie, and just start us off by giving us a brief rundown of who you are, how you started your business, and we'll go from there. Welcome. Well, I'm a French Canadian who landed at Vegas uh, 10 years ago. I started my officially my business in 2020 because I was I used to be a performer. I'm still a performer, but like I'm not full time. And in 2020, nothing was happening. And I had a calling for organizing, which I've been doing on a site for pretty much like 20 years. Now it's uh, basically my main um, my main job. Like it's it, it is my full time business. Yeah, that's about me. <laughs> yeah, you in a nutshell. Love it. So you may- mentioned that you were a performer previously yeah. were you were you doing that in Vegas around the world uh but yes in Vegas I was in Cirque du Soleil I did uh 10 years with Cirque du Soleil I did two shows here uh with Cirque uh, that's mm-hmm. why I moved uh, to Vegas the first one was called Arcana and the second one was called uh, Zumanity both are closed now it's very cool yeah Yeah, I'm familiar with both shows. Um, Just like a weird little bit of background. I'm from the Midwest and I used to teach dance and choreography at a school. (laughs) Yeah, we sent a lot of our kids from that school to Montreal to go train with their like with their farm program to go into Cirque. So that's really, really awesome. I want to ask you afterwards which acts you did and all that fun stuff. (laughs) But we don't have time for that. That's a totally different podcast episode. So Given your very unique background in performance, it's interesting to me being a performer myself, hearing about how one comes into the world of organizing because it's it's a completely different profession, but I have met several other artists who find themselves in this line of work. So how exactly, what was the the thing that connected you to organizing? Well, there was two things. Uh, First thing is as a performer, I used to have so much costumes and accessories that I, that's how I started organizing. Um, and I, I started doing it on a site for other performers, friends, drag queens, circus artists, uh, storage units and stuff, uh, just for fun, just for, for help, especially for myself. I had so much stuff before I moved to, to mm-hmm. Vegas. I was not a minimalist, let's just say. Um, <laughs> I had everything for an entire cast of Les Mis, another cast of Grease, another. I I, I could literally dress up a uh, cast for any kind of musical you want. And during COVID, I was basically doing nothing. I was fostering kittens, and while I was feeding them, I was watching uh, Hoarders on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And that's when the light bulb came in. I uh, came up. Uh, oh wow. I want to help people and this is this doesn't gross me out so let me take a look at this uh, what is hoarding how you can uh, how can I help and that's how I started my business as a professional organizer beautiful okay you are the first official hoarding expert that I've had on the show oh really <laughs> yes and because many clients that I speak with you know we always try to go over what it is that they're interested in yeah. trying to figure out a potential niche to weave into and everybody's always like yeah hoarding's not for me it's not my thing I don't know I feel like you need a lot of training this and that so I'm very excited this is a great segue into our next question yes. <laughs> I, want, I want you to explain to all of us what hoarding actually looks like. So how can a person tell uh, or understand their hoarding tendency? So just school us up, girlfriend. Uh, hoarding is a mental disorder. It is recognized by the DSM-5, which is the book of, of mental uh, disorders. There's a huge difference between excessive accumulation, compulsive shopping, the ones I would call collectors, mm-hmm. uh, chronically disorganized people, and hoarding. Um, to have to be a purist of the term uh, in hoarding, there is no other condition, whether uh, it is physical or mental. So if the patient, the, the client's been diagnosed with OCD or bipolar disorder, this is not technically hoarding. Most of my hoarding clients have lots of like chronic pain, um, uncontrolled diabetes and stuff like that. So technically it's not Hoarding. Hoarding is, um, I would describe it as an excessive accumulation and the value that the person gives to possessions is not normal. Mm -hmm. Uh, They have uh, mostly emotional attachment 
to things that have zero, zero value, even mm-hmm. not even a sentimental value. Uh, for example, uh, I had a, a couple, they had a collection of Walmart bags, mm-hmm. plastic bags. It was every, and empty Kleenex boxes. Oh, mm-hmm. I can maybe use that. These like thousands, thousands of that. Uh, uh, and it's everywhere in the house. Interesting. Every- yeah, everywhere. There's five levels of porning. I'm the only one, I think, in Vegas who takes uh, up to uh, the fifth level, which oh, is wow. extremely heartbreaking, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. The other other organizers in the area just sent me. Now, that's how I get most of my clients. They're like, oh, I can't take this, but uh, Cassie's gonna, Cassie can help you. Everybody needs a Cassie in their community. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I, swear. <laughs> I need a Cassie. Well, well, the thing is with me, it doesn't gross me out. Yes, I wear protective uh, equipment, but it it does. I, I don't judge. It is not my place to judge. And I prefer this, to be honest with you, way much more than uh, what I call vanity displaying. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, I love placing Louboutins and Yves Saint Laurent shoes and, and pashmina scarves in a closet, but that's really not my thing. I, I, I don't feel good when I come home after that. <laughs> when I come home and I know I help... Uh, uh, or people with uh, hoarding or excessive accumulations uh, issues to keep their uh, roof over their heads and be more safe in their environment. That's why I do this. Yeah, that's your gift and and what you have to share with yeah. your community that feeds your soul. It's really not about the aesthetics as much as it is the actual people that you're serving. The first thing uh, that I do with hoarders is called harm reduction. I clear any uh, entrance and exits from a house, reduce fire hazard, uh, especially old papers, old boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, if there's bugs and stuff, also usually there's like no running water, no functioning electricity. Um, the oven might not work. The wow. shower. The shower. Uh, I remember with this was one one couple. We had to clean the kitchen in the complete dark because no, the lightning wasn't working. Mm-hmm. And there was no running water in the kitchen either. So for cleaning, it was a little hard. Mm. But once we clean that area, the people, uh, like the maintenance people were able to come in and fix those things. Gotcha. That was, that was the first goal. Okay. You need running water. You need lights. You need, <laughs> um, and also most people with hoarding issues have so much stuff around them that they cannot circulate easily in the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the goal is if, if emergency people, uh, firefighters, police, ambulance, if they need to get a stretcher in there, it's 36 inches large. That's the minimum mm-hmm. that a wheelchair or a stretcher would take. My goal is to reduce those gold trails as we call them. Right. Uh, they, they teach uh, firefighters that also in firefighters training. So it's to clear those like areas so there's no in case of emergency everyone is safe the wow. people and the the, the the patient calling it themselves sure yeah. yeah so are you working with a team of specialists you work with therapists oh yeah and other <laughs> like there's a i'm sure there's like a whole brigade of people to come in and help these clients it's not just you coming in all by yourself or, or how does that work some people with real hoarding issues don't acknowledge the issue it's uh, it's part of the the problem with hoarding, there's a problem of, of, about the insight. Mm-hmm. You don't think they have a problem. Part of my job is to try to make them realize how mm-hmm. unhealthy it is and that they, there's an issue. I definitely work with a therapist. I like that ther- no, the therapist because you can have Zoom sessions uh, and I work with some specializing in hoarding and OCD because hoarding used to be related to OCD. And CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, is what up to this day works the best with uh, mm-hmm. hoarding clients. It's just rewiring the brain to understand the issue and the emotional attachment to mm-hmm. possessions. Yeah. And your boots on the ground in the space, working through that with them, both physically yeah. and mentally. So you're basically the first line of defense in untangling <laughs> that web yeah. of, of understanding and attachment. Yeah. I'm the one holding the hand when I'm trying to explain that bottle beer bottle caps uh, are not people. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> it's 
it's not gonna it, it this is not healthy it attracts the roaches and stuff and there's no space in the house for this so I'm the one holding the hand I see myself I, I I'm not a therapist although I'm I'm I'm, I'm trained in horning and I've had lots of training in it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but but I see myself like as a therapy service like a complement to a therapy service 100 percent, 100 percent. so you mentioned that you're wearing some protective gear when you go into these clients homes for good reason so do you ever have to work with other like exterminators or things like that are there situations where you come in and you're like we can't do anything until this is taken care of or do you just kind of dive in either way no i especially at levels four and five, uh, there usually are uh, bug infestations. Mm-hmm. And I guess we're talking black widows, scorpions. <laughs> In the desert, yeah. And recluse. So it's not, I, I don't care about the roaches in the mouse. I mean, they're harmless. Sure. Uh, but there is real danger for me and my team. Mm-hmm. Well, usually I work in pair with the uh, extermination company because they can't get in there at all. Right. Right. I'm clearing paths with my team to so they can access the, the, the nest, the scorpion nest or, or, or things like that. So it's uh, it really depends on the case. If it's a I mean, there's a bad infestation. Yeah. Wow. That's absolutely fascinating. I guess you may have already answered this question. Perhaps you can elaborate a little bit on it. But what would you say is the first step for folks to specifically overcome their hoarding behaviors? The first step is understanding that experiences are way better than uh, than physical possessions. With hoarding, because of there's, they can't invite people in. There's a huge impact on their family life, on their social life, on even on their work. Mm-hmm. If they still work, because most of them uh, just have physical or medical, like medical uh, issues. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I would I would try to guide people is that it's about it's all about health, mm-hmm. mental health and physical health. Like imagine if there's no dust and no bugs, uh, how better you would physically feel. Mm-hmm. How your daughter and your grandkids would come see you in the house. I know you love them, so it's so rewired. That's the first thing. Yeah, to acquire the emotional attachment to things, towards real things like people, that stuff that really matters. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. I think that's a perfect answer. So I want to move on and ask you kind of what a typical work day looks <laughs> like for you because you, you got a lot going on. <laughs> I have fifty percent of my clients who are just not 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 hoarders who are. Mm-hmm. Uh, excessive uh, compulsive shoppers, chronically disorganized, lots of ADHD. I would say it's a very common thing in people who need organizers. I would usually start in the morning with a light, a lighter client. I do like an hour or two uh, as though there's some clients, they, they, they do their discarding themselves and they just want me to come pick up the donations, for example, yeah. or uh, just a little maintenance thing. Like, okay, it's like, ah, yeah. it's after Christmas. I, I'm, I'm like, my, my house is a mess or I'm, I'm having guests. So please come over, please help me. Oh, I start with a light, uh, light job that's not emotionally uh, demanding for me. Mm. Then in the afternoon, because also most hoarders with physical or mental impairment, they sleep really late. Yeah. They sleep a lot. They're always tired. It's mm-hmm. very physically, like for them, like they cancel a lot. Oh, I can't today. I don't feel good. And the distress associating with the discarding in the process is very hard on them. Mm-hmm. Oh, around maybe 1 p.m. until I do only three, three hours tops sessions. It's for the for the tough ones. Right. Sometimes like an hour or two and sometimes it's like five minutes and they're done wow so i would say from one to four of a session mostly w- uh, usually with my team because horning cases it's a lot of stuff so i can't do that alone right so i'm working directly with the clients my team helps me okay this box uh we can get rid of every uh kleenex box and uh, plastic bags in this one so mm-hmm. and old mail so you go through this uh you do the shredding you clean after that so right i work directly with the clients and then i take a nap and now you go sing and perform <laughs> i love it i love it yes and then you you got a busy busy schedule yeah. seven it's seven it's seven seven yeah wow so you're taking on more than one client per day and you're doing this full time in addition to working as a performer yeah. in the evenings. Yeah. I don't even know how you found time to fit this interview and you must take Mondays off. Like <laughs> it's classic. 
<laughs> yeah, I was going to say that's the way it usually works in the performance industry. You work all weekend and then Monday is like, you know, Monday's dark. Yeah. It's Monday's, Sabbath. Monday's dark so I can rest my body and my voice because I'm not 20 anymore. Right. <laughs> Everything hurts. Organizing hurts. That's why I also have a team of younger people. To do the, most of the heavy lifting. Yeah. So let me ask you about that a little bit because I assumed it wasn't just you because that would be. At, it, like absolutely magical if you were able to do all this work by yourself so I'm, I'm not super woman. <laughs> <laughs> so do you uh, are they your employees are they subcontractors or how does that work for you in your business uh subcontractors okay uh, cool some who love organizing but don't want to be organizers I have people who wants to be organizers and learn also. They ask me a lot of questions. I'm I'm really happy to share. My clients adore them. Uh, also, they have pretty great connections. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes other organizers as well. When I need more muscle power, like people, uh, if it's, especially if it's a family and I have two or three members of the same family with excessive accumulation problems, I need another organizer. I draw the line. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of doing the project management and if they have questions and in doubt just refer to me but usually they're pretty independent yeah the workload is decided before we gathered outside of the house or the location before it's okay today we're going to do this 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 and this everything changes all the time because right. but i have great help here it that's is awesome yeah i think that's really great that you provide that opportunity and you're so gracious with sharing the jobs with people and not everybody is willing to do that as a as a business owner. And I think that we need a little bit more of that community spirit here, friends. So that's awesome that you are <laughs> providing that. Yes. Yeah. So I want to I want to move on just a little bit. Just keep ticking down. I'm I'm cheating and looking at my notes here. I feel like I say that every podcast. <laughs> It's Whatever. So silly. So moving forward in your business, what are you hoping to achieve this year and moving forward? What's your vision for the creative um, organizer? I'm working on a line of products. Oh, um, fun. After working with so many disorganized and ADHD people, I realized like they buy tons of products to, to try to organize mm -hmm. and those things never work. I see the need. So I'm designing products right now with a friend of mine who used to be a props designer with Cirque du Soleil. Oh, interesting. And it's very demanding. It's a, it's a full-time job, like creating a, a line of products. I don't have funds. Mm -hmm. so I'm trying to get like funding and stuff. And I'm, this is not a part I love. I'm not bad at it, but it, I, I don't like it. So. It's very time consuming. Yeah, and, and I, yeah. I focus. My clients need me. That that line doesn't need me. So, I, and also finding maybe a better balance between my performing and the clients. Mm -hmm. That would be a, a goal because I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bet you're maybe trying to think of hiring some more permanent employees to help you out with boots on the ground type work, or do you really prefer to be in the space with the client? problem is I cannot really do that because I have extensive training and experience and this it's I don't want to train people that's not my place mm -hmm. uh, I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm not a teacher or a coach probably uh, sticking to the clients who need me the most mm -hmm. being able to yeah delegate work like I'm not going to send a team I'm just going to send another organizer Ooh. right probably has worked with me in the past. So she knows the way I work. Mm -hmm. So I say, okay, I have a level two hoarding. Would you be able to take this, this case? And if you need help, I'll be there for you. Like, sure. you need so that's what I would do. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and as far as training is concerned for yeah. being a hoarding expert that you are, what would you recommend? Where would you think people should go? There's three, uh, there's two main uh, places, NAPO. Uh-huh. And uh, ICD, Institute oh, yeah. for Changing This Organization. Yeah. Uh, ICD for me was a game changer. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, and that's where I got my certifications too. And with NAPO, but I'd say ICD was the best. Like this was like, oh my God, there's so many elements and classes. I can't. <laughs> right, right. I've heard that actually. I have some friends that are members of ICD and I work with a lot of ADHD clients as well. I'd say that's probably 90% of the the clients that I work with and they're like you have to get certified go through ICD that's the best program they have the okay. best classes for ADHD so I'm that's one of my goals for this year as well yeah and, and the Naples certification the horning specialist also is worth it mm -hmm. uh, 
lots of my clients, they look online. They're very scared of, oh my God, she's going to have me trash like all my stuff. Right. And they f- they're freaking, yeah, they are freaking out. Yeah, I believe so, that. And they, they look they, they, they look at me online. Oh, what's Napo? Oh, okay, she's a professional. Like it relieves a lot of uh, fears. And there's also IOCDF. It's coming up. Uh, there's a, con- a hoarding conference every year. Oh. And there's, they always have Dr. Randy Frost, who is the expert on hoarding. And he's there and you can ask him questions. <laughs> and just like, he's like, oh my God, it's like, I can interact with the, the world expert on hoarding, which is absolutely amazing. It's like a two days online conference, $75 for professionals. Oh, wow. It is absolutely worth it. There's, and you can talk. And that's where also I found the therapist I'm working with. Mm-hmm. online chat rooms and stuff uh, and sure. other uh, hoarding specialists also that so I, I OCDF is also a great resource for train not that's for training but more like community and resources absolutely yeah I'll be sure to link all that down I'll get the info from Cassie before I log off with her today and get that into the description for everybody so that you can check that out if you're if you're feeling led to work with hoarders that there, there aren't many magical unicorn people like you out there in the world Cassie that are willing to do the work that you do and it's just it's so beautiful um, that we have people like you and the rest of your community to help support those of us who say help <laughs> I love it. Um, I, think I want to share also. It, it, please. That the people are like, oh my God, how do you deal with the smell? Yes, <laughs> I get that question all the time. So big vapor I put inside my mask. Oh, yeah. And that well, takes care of it? It helps a lot. Although I'm not grossed out easily. Yeah. But there are some cases that you need to, and my team need it too. Also, like, I can't get in there. <laughs> like, I can't. Absolutely. So you, and like, if you hoarding cleaning experts like Mike Patton, who does that, uh, like on the show hoarders, uh, they have expensive PPE protection, like equipment. Sure. Uh, with oxygen and, and, and things like that. So I'm not, so. You stick to the VIX and it works just as I well. I stick to the VIX, yeah. <laughs> love it. I love that. So to wrap up, Tell us three pieces of advice for anyone looking to start a professional organizing business, particularly if they want to join the Magical Unicorn Club of hoarding professionals. Okay. And I first want to say it's a business. So get coaching for business. The main reason that 90% of businesses don't work within the first year, it's because the lack of training and and understanding how business work. Mm -hmm. There are three free resources that I had when I started. It's it's core through SBA, the Small Business Association. Uh, It's free. You get a mentor. Mm -hmm. I see that on Facebook organizing groups. How do you, oh, I have my first job. What do you charge? Whoa, if you haven't established your prices before you start, you have a problem. It's going to tank. IRS is going to go after you, like just the business parts. And that's how you find clients and have a sustainable business as well. Right. Second, I would say if you want to get into like any organizers, even especially warning, you work for your client and not the opposite. You have to adapt. It's really not only making things pretty, it needs to be sustainable and it needs to work for your client. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to go back six times as people are, nah, that doesn't work. Okay, let's find a solution that works for you. So I I usually offer free maintenance because of like, they can call me, okay, guys, it doesn't work. I have more more paper bags than I used to have. Like this this thing, okay, let's find a solution. So you have to be creative and adapt and adapt. You work for your client, that would be. Right. And the last uh, advice, yeah, get training. Mm-hmm. Get training. I know it's expensive to join uh, ICD or NAPO, but you can pick. You can take a class here and there. You don't have to be a member to take a class or, or the, the OCDF uh, conference, hoarding conference, it's $75. And you, it's a write-off. Any, <laughs> every training and information you get is a write-off for your business. Right, right. You Very valid. And never know too much. Yeah, I love it. I think that's fabulous advice. Hope everybody was listening and stuck around until the end of this episode to hear that. Make sure that you do. If you have any questions, of course, you can come to me. And we want to find you, Cassie, online. So if we're all in Vegas, we want to come see you perform. We want to <laughs> find you on social media. How do we do that? How do we get in touch with you? The performer is Cassie Stone. So uh-huh. you can go Cassie Stone Vegas. Okay. Uh, I'm mainly work downtown, so <laughs> like in the old yeah. Vegas. 
Fremont, yeah, old Vegas. Fremont. That's my favorite part of Vegas. Yeah, me too. It, it, it's it's just I love it. It's yeah. people watching one on one. Like it's people watching the best people watching in the world. Yeah, so charming. Ooh. Love it. Yeah, so I uh, I sing on Fremont and I work as a singer bartender also in a bar. Very uh, cool. So that would be the performance part. As the organizer part, it's creativeorganize.com. Uh huh. The same on Facebook and uh, Instagram. I'm pretty easy to find. Just Google hoarding Las Vegas and most of the, <laughs> except the, the, the cleaning emergency problems, you might find me. So, oh yeah, you're, I'm sure you're way up there with the, with the best of them. That's awesome. <laughs> I'll be sure to link all of Cassie's info down below. Cassie, again, thank you so thank much. You. It's been an honor to have you on the show and spend some time with you this afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. I hope it helps and I hope it, I hope it will, I hope you guys want to do that because there's a huge need. Yeah. People, if you're an empath, if you love people, consider going to hoarding. Certainly. (laughs) Yes, you are needed and I probably will send them your way. Any coaching clients I get that have an interest, I'm like, dude, I know a gal that you got to talk to. I'll send them to you. (laughs) Thank you, Cassie. Thank you so much, Melanie. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for sticking around until the end. I hope you got tons of value out of this episode. I personally found it fascinating, and I chatted with Cassie for a little while after we finished this recording, and she's so passionate about what she does. She's very knowledgeable. She has tons of resources. She's a great person to reach out to if you're considering getting into the king of kings aspect of this business and going in for the hoarding clients. I encourage you to get in touch with Cassie. She's fantastic. And beyond that, don't forget to check out all of the goodies, all the resources I got down for you in the show notes or the description of the YouTube video. It will also be pinned as a comment on YouTube. So be sure to check all that out. Book your coaching call with me. There may be a couple of spots left for February, but my schedule does fill up super fast. So go ahead and get on the roster there. I would love to sit and chat with you and be sure to join that free Facebook group. It's another way to connect with myself and other like-minded people. And beyond all of that, I hope you all have a fabulous day and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.